Hey everybody, welcome back. We're still on demand and this video is called Demand is the Marginal Benefit Curve. Now this video we could probably put over in welfare analysis or consumer surplus. In fact, in a lot of ways that's where this video falls. But we want you to understand demand at a deeper level right up front, okay? So like I said, demand is the marginal benefit curve. In fact, I'm going to focus on the marginal benefit curve right from the beginning, okay? So I'm going to take that demand, I'm going to throw it off to the side, I'll bring it back later on in the video. So I just want to graph the marginal benefit curve. I've got this data over here. I've got three people in our marketplace, Jack, Jill, and Mary, and when I wanted you to think like slices of pizza, okay? And here's the data that I've got. I've got the marginal benefit of the first slice that they consume and the marginal benefit of the second slice they uh, consume. So very simply, Jack, his first slice of pizza, he's going to get $7 of benefit. That's his max he's willing to pay. For his second slice of pizza, it's not going to give him as much uh, benefit. It's called the law of diminishing marginal utility. Uh, he's not going to get as much benefit for that second slice, $5 of benefit uh, for the second slice. Max he's willing to pay. Jill, first slice, Six bucks of benefit, okay, for that first slice, only three dollars for the second slice. Mary, marginal benefit of that first curve, or the benefit of that first slice, sorry about that, that benefit is eight dollars. Mary, four dollars for the second slice, okay? So we've got this data and we want to graph it. We want to graph the marginal benefit curve. Now, technically right now, we could put this in you know, a lot of different orders, but we're going to be very intentional. We're going to put this in descending order, okay? It's just the way that we want to plot this graph. Here's what I'm saying. We want to say, okay, for the first slice of pizza, what would be the max benefit that somebody could get from it? Well, that's pretty simple. The first slice of pizza, if it goes to Mary, we're going to get our maximum benefit that we could get. So that's $8. So I'm going to go right up here above one, put a dot. That dot is our first dot on our marginal benefit curve. Now, Marginal benefit, additional benefit for consuming one more slice of pizza. So, one more slice of pizza. That second slice, what's the maximum benefit? What's the maximum marginal benefit we can get? Well, let's take a look. It'd be if Jack got the second slice, seven bucks. So, go to two, go to seven. That dot is also on our marginal benefit curve. Let's keep going. Third slice, okay? Remember, Jack's already consumed one, Mary's, Mary's already consumed one, Jack's already consumed one. How about the third slice? Well, that would be if it went to Jill. So I'm going to go to three, Jill, put a dot right there. Let's keep going. Four slice of pizza. What's the maximum benefit we can get from that? Remember, all of those have already been consumed. There it is, $5. Jack, marginal benefit, $5. Going to go right to there. Okay. So this, once again, is my marginal benefit curve. And that's one, uh, one more slice or two more slices. Let's do the fifth slice, fifth slice. That'd be Mary, $4, that would be it. So we're gonna go to fifth, $4, right there. This line should be looking pretty linear, that's how we set it up. And then finally, Jill, for that sixth slice. Remember, that one's been eaten, that one's been eaten, that one's been eaten, that one's been eaten, that one's eaten. We've got six slice, the sixth slice would be Jill, $3, go to six, $3. All right, connect those lines. Now, I want those dots to stay very visual though, okay? Because you're going to hear in later videos that I'm going to say all demand curves are made up of a series of dots, okay? So I want you to be able to see these dots. But here I'm going to do something a little bit strange first. Before I really pull demand back in, I want to stay with marginal benefit because there is something that I think is very important, but it's kind of technical. But if you get this, I think it's going to make your life a lot easier. Here's what it is. This vertical axis, what's it measuring? It's measuring marginal benefit. So we're seeing these values as marginal benefit. Hopefully that should make sense, okay? And here's the key. The marginal benefit is dependent on which good is being consumed. So I just threw a curveball to you, or at you. Here it is. When you see this curve as the marginal benefit curve, the vertical axis is actually measuring the dependent variable. Once again, the marginal benefit is dependent on which good is being consumed. If it's the first good being consumed, $8. If it's the third good, only $6. So when we see this line as the marginal benefit curve, guess how it shifts? It shifts up and down. Let's say our taste for the good uh, increases. Remember, that's a determinant of demand. Taste for the good increases. What's really happening? Our marginal benefit is increasing at all quantities of pizza. 
okay? So you see this curve, you see it as the MB curve, it shifts up and down, not left and right. However, the MB curve is the demand curve. This information is what gives us the demand curve. What do I mean by that? Well, let's now see these values as price, okay? Remember, an independent variable, right? So once I put price right there, this curve is also the demand curve. That's why, guys, this video is tough, okay? Might be worth watching twice, but if you get this down, I'm telling you, it's gonna make your life easier. So we're also seeing these values as price. If the price was $4, let's say the market price was $4. Remember, the market determines the price. If the market price is $4, how many would be bought, okay? The number that would be bought would be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It would be five, okay? Now that one's a little bit weird because some of y'all might thinking, would you for sure buy the fifth good? And actually that's a, to uh, a toss up. So I wanna make it a little bit easier. Let me say it this way. If the price was three and a half dollars, how many would be bought? You would buy any of them for which your marginal benefit was greater than the price. So we would buy five. If the price went up to four and a half dollars, we would buy four. If the price went up to five and a half dollars, we would buy three. Here's what I'm saying, is the MB tells us the quantity demanded at each price point. Once you know the marginal benefit curve, then you know the quantity demanded at every price point. You know the quantity that will be demanded at every single price point. And here's where it gets interesting. This curve, though it is both the marginal benefit and the demand curve, if you refer to it as the demand curve, it shifts right and left. If you refer to it as the marginal benefit curve, it shifts up and down. Let's see how that works in one simple example. Like I said, let's imagine taste for the good goes up. Our taste goes up. Well, what would we do? We would put marginal benefit values that are higher. If they're higher, the marginal benefit curve would shift up, okay? We're getting more marginal benefit at every output level. And when that happens, when we get more marginal benefit at every output level, guess what? Or let me, see, let me put it this way. When marginal benefit goes up, let me get that on the board, guess what? Demand is shifting to the right. We're gonna get more quantity demanded, there's the quantity, more quantity demanded at every price point. So one more time to wrap this up. Taste increases. When taste increases for the good, just all those values up. The marginal benefit measured in dollars is increasing at all output levels. And what does that cause? If the marginal benefit increases at all output levels, the quantity demanded, now I'm back on the demand, the quantity demanded, okay, is gonna increase at all price points. So there you go. The demand curve is the marginal benefit curve. That video might be worth watching twice. I know it's technical, but I promise you, in the end, you getting that is gonna get you a deeper understanding. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.